Hey guys, this is Vool, and we're going to take a look at yet another Ghost of Gamers Game of the Week. And I uh, hope you guys have been enjoying this feature, I certainly have. Uh, we've actually got a Protoss vs. Zerg game up today, and the Protoss player is Ever Peace Saber, and his opponent is going to be Haim from the ARNC clan, uh, same clan as uh, Yellow, or Fake Yellow as some people like to call him. And the map's Andromeda. I've got uh, Diggity with me, and uh, really looking forward to commentating once again with Diggity. Uh, and just taking a look at this uh, this map, I'm just wondering whether we're still going to see st stuff like Ser Reaver into carriers, which we saw quite a lot over the last few months when it was uh, a big idea in Pro League, a lot of people using that strategy. But, uh, I mean, it's the game of the week over at Ghost of Gamers, so maybe one of these players has decided to do something very wacky. I'm very uh, keen to see whether that's going to be the case, but uh, anyway, I'm just going to hand it over to Dickity. Thanks very much for joining me, and uh, yeah, pleased to be commentating with you once again. Absolutely my pleasure. Absolutely. Uh, with my favorite New Zealander. I think I'm allowed to say that now, aren't I? I don't know many other New Zealanders, so... And it's so That's easy to fall there. Um, hey, hey. Uh, we see an Overlord being built, so it's possible 12th... I'm going to assume that we're going to see uh, 12th, uh, 12th Hatchery build. This is Andromeda. Most likely going to see this go in, at least into the mid game, most likely into the late game. Big map, lots of minerals tends to... And I think that's why people enjoy it. I've seen a lot of people playing it just kind of around uh, with my eyes, with the spies and whatnot. I think it's because it does go into that mid-game and late-game more often. And we'll see if actually, depending on scouting, if you can actually pull the three hatch where you have that probe scout starting to go to the upper left-hand corner there on the opposite end for Saber. And uh, Saber starting out with a gateway. So pretty standard, uh, not, not going for a fast expand, interestingly enough. I can't imagine him going for a two-gate build on this map. There's just way too much room to go for a two-gate build, so maybe just one base tech here. Yeah, definitely. Well, I, I think that we're not going to be seeing Ser Reva because you really need that, that quick uh, expansion if you're going Ser Reva. So uh, he's building a Zealot right now. Uh, putting the offensive on his opponent, uh, looks like... We've got our Zerg friend here actually putting down a spawning pool straight after his expansion. But remember, this expansion's at the uh, at the mineral, mineral only position. He hasn't actually taken the quick gas, uh, so maybe he's just expecting Saber to be a bit more aggressive. And uh, it's probably a good idea considering now he can hold the ramp against any kind of zealot push. Looks like uh, Saber's going to be hitting his probe up the ramp. We've got a drone scouting for uh, Haim as well. And, uh, yeah, like I said, we're probably not going to be seeing Sea Reaver, but we're probably going to be seeing a bit of early game micro, and I'm actually quite excited to see that. Oh, look, this is nice. Uh, looks like we've got Saber setting his, his, his probe in to prevent the third hatchery from going down. Always really nice to see that. It's going to be a war between the, the drone and the probe. Looks like the, the drone is, is scaring the... Oh, he's got the hatchery down. Very nice. So three hatchery up for uh, for Haim, and he's got uh, six Zerglings showing up now, but will they be enough to stop the... Uh, the single zealot, I think they will be. Wow, this is a really clever strategy there by Saber. Unfortunately, didn't pay off for him. What he was going to hope, and what he was hoping for is, is, is that uh, essentially in the opposite side, Haim would get just way too greedy. That he'd go for the early three hatch, and that his zealots would be able to go in and get some economic damage. Unfortunately, first of all, twelve hatch not on the outside, uh, and also he put the spawning pool down immediately afterwards. Didn't just go for a straight three hatch rebuild. Now the zergling should be able to handle that zealot fairly easily without any drone damage, and should be able to take out the probe as well. And so just yeah, going for that gate quickly, building some zealots to put on some early pressure and then taking an expansion uh, and just going to rely on the distance and another hatchery going down so straight into a four hatchery uh, zergling build I don't see any gas down yet wow four hatcheries down this is nuts and zealots still kind of pushing around that was very clever on Saber's part though he's leading those uh, zerglings out to the corner there so he can kind of split the forces up so he can still get maybe that second zealot in to get a drone kill or two looks like he is going to get at least one drone kill but no wow Haim reacting very very well pulling those drones off the line uh, and still occupying basically occupy both troops beautiful multitasking there really clever strategy again Saber just uh, throwing, uh, showing some very good creativity but it's just not paying off for him here uh, still able to get some drone kills but honestly for the cost of three zealots and also delaying of the expansion I don't think that really paid off for him uh, one thing that I can say about Saber's build though is he actually can totally see what's going on in Haim's space he's gonna see that Haim has actually gone for those four hatcheries uh, so he'll have a better idea as to whether he's going to be up against, what, Mutalists or anything. He's actually got two Forges! Two Forges! Wow! And um, this could mean some serious uh, early game upgrading stuff. I think what Hain will probably want to do is get a quick uh, Hydralist in and actually start going to Hydras. 
because if he techs up, it's just going to be too slow. He's spent on four hatcheries, he's lost some drones, and he's still having to produce Zerglings to just stop these these Zealots. So, uh, Haim, Haim is in a bit of a tough situation. I'm really really eager to see what Save actually decides to do with all of his, uh, his units. He's just putting a Cybernetics Core down now, but he's really on the back foot. He's invested in, in four hatcheries, but he just doesn't really have enough drones to get enough minerals to use all of the four hatcheries. Just clearing out this last zealot now, but uh, you can see that the damage has really been done. Uh, he's, he's on the back foot, and uh, we've got uh, Saber putting down a photon cannon, so he's ready for the inevitable counterattack that uh, Haim is going to want to do. So, uh, ugh, yeah, I'm not really sure what I'd be doing if I was Haim, but I... I probably, I mean, one thing that I'm thinking of is, is going to Hydras, because once you've got the four hatcheries, it's just a matter of quickly produ producing a lot of drones, then start building a lot of uh, Hydralisks after that, and uh, maybe, you know, try and get some more expansions, or try and press in and really put pressure on the Protoss, make him put down more Photon Cannons than he needs. Uh, by the way, uh, hey, sorry, Saber is actually going for the Stargate, so uh, maybe... Maybe he does expect expect, uh, expect a spy, but I think more likely he just really wants to be able to scout and just make sure he knows exactly what Haim is doing every step of the way. And Saber with some micromanagement and just really forcing, just, wow, just with the constant zealot harassment and constantly splitting his zealots up there and forcing the Zerglings to engage on multiple fronts, you can see the supply count, 35 uh, versus 44 uh, slash 50 at this stage. There's both forges winding up. This is a very, very creative build from Saber, I have to say. Uh, and it looks like he should be able to hold this front door with those zealots, with those two cannons and that Dragoon. Right now, Haim is going to just... The, the one thing, though, about Zerg is when you have four hatcheries down, you can really pump your, your economy quickly. Uh, right now, he's running into a bit of that side cap, though. Uh, but I expect him to be able to pump this economy if he chooses to very, very rapidly, considering he has four hatcheries. He can just go straight drones at this stage. Unfortunately, uh, pulling that Overlord back at this moment, I think if he had left that Overlord a little bit uh, on the perimeter and just kind of sacrificed it, he had a better idea when the troop movement was coming. So he could just keep pumping economy at that stage. But it looks like he's already got the Hydralis done down. He's already got that that layer tech up. Uh, it looks like he's now actually running into a supply cap because he just had that uh, one of the overlords taken out. Quick uh, overlord to replace it, but right now, yeah, things really working well for Saber. So uh, one thing we actually saw just uh, during that was that Haim actually managed to spot the, the uh, Stargate with his overlord before it died. Uh, just as Diggity said, uh, you're quite right, if he had kept that overlord in a better position, he would have been able to sort of see the troop movement. The Dragoon right now is killing the power generator, as you can see next to Saber's um, uh, natural expansion. He really wants to be able to have a look around there to see if there are any other overlords, just so he can guarantee that uh, Haim won't have that extra bit of scouting. But now we've got a course here heading over Haim's base. He actually sees what uh, Saber is up to. Saber is indeed going for the Hydralis Den, just as I suggested that he might try to go for. But he's also going for a Spire, so uh, he he's actually quite wary that Saber may be going into the Sea Reaver build after all. I mean, as you can see, we've got a, a, pro a robotics facility down. We are actually getting a shuttle there. I can't see a robotic support bay just yet, but we are getting air weapons as well. So wouldn't be surprised if he was going for that. There it is in the secondary, uh, yeah. Yeah. Then again. Uh, Protoss Zealots, we've got about eight of them now, if I count them right, yeah, that's eight Zealots, and uh, producing a ninth, so he's he's going to be able to push out with the ground as well, and I'm not sure if Haim will be expecting that, I'm sure he'll be prepared for that with the number of Hydrals he's able to build at this point, but uh, there you go, I mean, he's built, he's upgrading range, he's getting an evolution chamber, uh, he's getting ready for the mid-game, and he's getting prepared to have to have a lot of units, and that's what he's going to need to fend off these, uh, these Reavers, but uh, just... You know, it's going to come down to whether Saber can do a lot of damage with him. He's been very good with his micromanagement early game, really looking forward to see what he can achieve with these Reavers. What's surprising me right here by Saber's build is he does have that robotic support bay at the secondary. It looks like he's upgrading shuttle speed. But if you notice, he put down additional gateways. He did not put down uh, an initial Stargate, and he did not put down an initial robotics facility. So it looks like what he's going to rely on is upgrades, a Reaver, uh, basically superior upgrades, a spear, uh, superior Reaver, and then a speed upgraded uh, Zealot legs to kind of carry him through the mid game and maybe push into Sarah Reaver combination uh, as he as he pushes on. But in the meantime, he's doing a lot of... He's just been really good with this harassment thus far. Uh, you can, again, tell by the 
with his apply count, 74 versus 103, is doing an excellent job with his macro management. Now some Mutalisks heading to the uh, 6 o'clock position 4, and there's nothing in position to really fight them off. That's going to send those Corsair home. The question is, is will they be able to get there in time before a significant amount of... Egg oh no, Shuttle headed out that direction with that probe. They're going to come... Let's see if the, the Mutalisks intercept, and that's going to be a denial of an expansion. Looks like they aren't going to intercept that Shuttle, fortunately, but I still think these Mutalisks should be able to take out uh, maybe a handful of probes before those, uh, those Corsairs come and take care of them. That's right, and uh, plus one air weapons nearly finished for Saber. Here he comes with the Corsairs, actually getting stuck in straight into the, uh, the Mutalisk right now. They're definitely going to be able to deal with the Mutalisk, no problem. And that, that plus one weapons is just about there. But again, the Mutalisks are actually heading across through to the east. Actually lagging a little bit, but uh, that's fine. The uh, Mutalisks are totally wiped out now, but I think he, he probably would have just come... Do you think he would have come in range to see that, that pile on there? Oh, he has now. Yeah, he has with the Scourges actually definitely seeing what's going on. Scourges taking out a, a, a Corsair. And look at the huge number of Zealots that, uh, that Saber has got. He's actually now putting two Reavers into that shuttle. He's going to want to be careful of that. He knows that uh, Haim is out and forced with Scourges. Uh, so he's going to have to be very careful with that shuttle. Uh, I'm very interested to see what he actually does with this big Zealot push. I'm not sure that Haim is going to be expecting that. Haim now expanding up the top left, as well as putting down a number of hatcheries in his main. And uh, he's, he's upgrading Lurk.